right hey everybody welcome back to full circle with joyce uh, and right now we're jumping straight into our viewpoint discussion and today we want to talk about youth affairs and youth matters uh, particularly uh, a bill that is coming up for um to discuss the national youth council okay the national youth council bill and with me in studio i have uh, two uh very celebrated guest i could say as far as youth matters and youth and politics is concerned with me i have edward kipkalia who uh, is the program coordinator at emerging leaders foundation and i also have nerima wako ojiwa yeah. who is the executive director of siasa please karibuni sana to the show thank you to thank both you. of you really good to have you here so next monday the Youth Service Organization will submit a memorandum on the National Youth Council Bill of 2019 with recommendations of amendment. And uh, you both, I guess, are part of this mm -hmm. uh, youth uh, service organization. Before we even get into the details of some of the amendments that mm -hmm. you're proposing, Tell us about this organization, first of all. You are obviously working in separate places, mm -hmm. and then there was this concerted effort to come together to form this other organization. Tell us a bit about the motivation behind that. Okay, absolutely. So we are about 30 organizations, and we're all youth-serving organizations. So that means we work with young people, we are young people. Mm -hmm. So we decided to come together, and now we formed a coalition. Imagine Leaders Foundation is in it, Siasa Place is in it, Power 254 is in it. Mm -hmm. We're very many, mm -hmm. but we're in all different spaces, okay. from technology to business to agriculture to advocacy. And it's because we felt that what was happening is really important mm -hmm. and we felt that as young people we needed to come together especially as civil society groups mm. and make recommendations toward this bill mm. mainly because it affects not just our work but it affects us as yeah. individuals yeah absolutely and um, so the the memorandum uh, that is being submitted uh, first of all before even that your part of your engagement then is on governance, livelihoods, leadership, and constitution. That's of the service. Yeah. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about why those specific areas. Okay. Uh, first, uh, all these organizations tackle, uh, there are different organizations that tackle these matters that affect the young people. Yeah. So, very specifically, we focus on governance because we realize that that is an aspect that the young people have been missing, especially. Uh, from the rural areas and also those areas which have uh, that are in the national, uh, actually the national county areas, whereby they have not been able to really participate fully in the governance processes. O also, when it comes to livelihoods, we realize that after now you build the capacity of these young people. Mm -hmm. What is actually the end game of these youths? And they have to do something. And because of that, we decided to look at the area of livelihoods where these young people can get something that can be able to uh, put for them uh, something at the end in the table. And that's why we realized, you know, there are many youth uh, who have a lack of unemployment. Mm -hmm. And when, when, when livelihoods comes in place, then it plays that critical role when it comes to involvement of young people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this obviously will affect the National Youth Council. Uh, proposing amendments to it then presumes that there are things that you're not happy with, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yes. <laughs> I Maybe. like how Nerima is like, <laughs> she's like ready to jump on it. <laughs> so clearly there are things that you're not happy with. Tell us about the council, why we need it, okay. and what's not working right now. Okay. So what young people need to understand is the National Youth Council was pretty much put in our constitution, well, it's legally mm -hmm. put in place to be the state voice for the youth. Mm -hmm. So that means that when it comes to youth issues or the youth voice, it's them. So a lot of youth either don't know about it mm -hmm. and those who do, don't even want it. Mm -hmm. And it's because of how it's been structured. It took a long time. So this conversation started way before, but in 2009, it was agreed to enter law, but it was actually enacted in 20. 13. Mm -hmm. So you can see five years of fighting. And, and some of the issues are that it's underfunded. And obviously, when we're talking about devolution, 
youth is not evolved, yeah. and then we also talk about political influence. So you find that a lot of times the CEO is linked to either the president or <laughs> alignment <laughs> to political parties, or you can't really do anything because you have to listen to who put you there. Yeah. And so we're fighting for this space because yeah. if it works the way it's supposed to work according to the constitution or according to law, then we would have a youth body mm -hmm. that youth groups, youth organizations, they don't have to be formal like ours, even those qua base. Yeah, yeah, you have a place to go to. Yeah. And, and that's why we are pushing for that. Okay. You know, speaking of <laughs> running things the way they're supposed to, I'm very curious, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but now I'm very curious considering you guys are doing Youth Matters, you're trying to get the right people in place. Um, I'm very curious of you guys' thoughts on this whole Mariga thing. And as far as the Jubilee, <laughs> she Let's like throws it. <laughs> she throws it to you, Edward. So I'm very curious because, in in many ways, it's sort of reflective of exactly what you've just talked about. Yeah. That oftentimes in these positions, it's someone who knows, you know, is affiliated to someone in some sort of way, and that's not necessarily to discredit that they can do the job. But you're just saying there should be a due process mm -hmm, followed. Mm -hmm. um, so here we have, uh, you know, celebrated football star Donald McDonald Mariga. Uh, turns out maybe he didn't have a voter's card <laughs> and now you know he's sort of in trouble um, as far as his bid I just want you guys to comment on that because I, I think it still relates in many mm -hmm. ways it does. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, first and foremost as I told you earlier uh, we are focusing on this National Youth Council in order to streamline the mainstream functions of the youth and as you realized on a lot of these political parties don't really have very vibrant uh, youth, youthful structures. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find they'll always pick as uh, someone who is of their own interest so that they can be able to serve their own interest and also champion the flag. And that's why you see, for example, Jubilee, maybe someone was thinking maybe we can use this young person to portray the fact that we support the young, young people yeah. and, and also to champion the interest of youth so that the youth can feel they are part of that. Yeah. And as you can see also throughout that constituency, we have different uh, youthful candidates. However, different political parties have different interests. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find that is the key issue that uh, is, is, is brought on stake. Political parties have always put youth as people who they can use in order to Kazi achieve Amkono. something. Yeah. Kazi Amkono. <coughs> And that is, this, is something that we really want to uh, uh, debunk from. Mm -hmm. Because when we have these youth being used to work with Mukono, how will they know that there is a governance process that I need to be there? Mm -hmm. What is that policy that I can influence up there? Mm -hmm. They'll always be, know that our work is just to go disrupt something. Our work is just to go mm -hmm. and and destroy that camp and all mm -hmm. that. And that's something that we really don't want yeah. uh, it to go on. Okay. So I don't encourage okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> A very nuanced answer there by Edward. Yeah. Nima, are you still skipping over this one? Well, okay, so <laughs> the only thing I'm going to say about that is, is this, like, celebrityness that's now being linked to our politics mm -hmm. and I have an issue with that and it's not to say that because he's from sports he shouldn't enter politics that's totally fine but it's just just what it's turning out to be yeah. is that now there are a lot more people who are who are coming out to enter politics but not really with an attitude of service and mm -hmm. that's my issue but also the issues that we have with um, electoral processes mm -hmm. um, the fact that the IBC list is not continuously <laughs> updated and it's supposed to be. Mm. Um, so I don't know, you know, he could be he registered. Could be. He still could be. <laughs> could it it be. just determines <laughs> which list they used. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we're like, come on. It could have been from last year. <laughs> so even if he yeah. registered like three weeks ago, imagine sure. he's still valid. Imagine. <laughs> They're just using the wrong list. And then it goes back to party list, you know? Yeah. Like, anyway, <laughs> yeah, our politics sometimes, I just look at it I and know. I'm like, I know. it's I a know. whole. And a lot of youth actually. Um, are with you in that you know the population of young people that pay attention to the news or even know what's happening in the news is dwindling day by day there's an increasing apathy by young people as far as leadership um, and governance in this country because of a lot of what we've seen and so hopefully these are some of the issues 
um, that this bill that and the amendments you're proposing to the bill can sort of help empower and uh, encourage more young people to get involved. And that's actually part of why we're having a show like this one, to, to bring more young people, especially young women as well, <laughs> uh, into these conversations so that we're talking about these as well. Because your vote matters, my friends. It does matter. So let's talk about the memorandum itself now. Um, it's proposing five key areas in the bill. Let's go through them one by one. It's a five-point agenda. Let's begin with professionalization of work. What is that? Uh, what did the previous uh, act say about it and what is being added now? So uh, first, the b previous bill did not majorly talk about any professionalization of, of youth work. Mm -hmm. And this is a futuristic view that as youth serving organization we envision for the National Youth Council. Mm -hmm. We've realized a lot of countries are moving towards the issue of trying to prof professionalize the youth work being done because a lot of youthful matters is not being taken as a prof as a profession. Yeah. Given that uh, today, if you want, if you're sick and you want to be healed, you'll go to a doctor who is a professional. But when it comes to youthful matters, every person is always running up and down, talking about youth matters. And that is not professionalization that is there. Okay. We believe the youth, since they formed majority of the population in the country, then they should be handled in a professional manner. So what, what exactly does that mean? What sort of work are, we, are you referring to? And what does it mean to professionalize it? Is it certificates awarded for it? Is it um, accreditation of some sort? What exactly does that mean? So first, when it comes to educational sector, we need a, a course that should be there for youth work. Okay. Side so that when, when, for example, you mean youth work as a program itself. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. youth work as a program. Side so that when you go into school, even students can opt in to choose courses mm. on youth work, so mm -hmm. that they cannot view the youth serving work as something that is Plan B. Right. Okay. Because most of them go, they do other courses, and if Plan A doesn't work, they decide I can go to this NGO, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's something that we really want to change. So that is a mindset factor. Okay. Two, when it comes to structures and coordination, there should be a streamlined structure in such a way that the person at the grassroots level can feel that the National Youth Council speaks for him or herself. Mm -hmm. And, and, that's, and that's the essence of the National Youth Council because their slogan is Saudi Avijana. Mm -hmm. So we need that structure, so that it starts from the village level to the ward level, to the constituency level, to the, uh, to the county level, and then to the national level. Well, let me ask you about that, Narima, because mm -hmm. in many ways, <clears throat> the MCA role was almost supposed to take care of a lot of that, wasn't it? And a lot of those guys in there technically yeah. are very young yeah. guys. Yeah. So, you know, would there be any sort of conflict or duplication of, of roles and activities there? Or are you now also saying, even these MCs, because do you get what I mean? I technically, do. it was supposed to be more or less the same role. Yeah. So you're right, Joyce, because um, we have over 1,000 MCAs who are below the age of 35. But also, um, when we look at the youth, uh, the youth sector and the fact that it's not devolved, it gets complicated when you go to the county and you want to meet the youth officer. Mm. There is none. Like it's mm. normally combined with ICT, sometimes agriculture, sometimes yeah. public service, <laughs> sometimes gender. It depends which county you're in. Mm -hmm. And now because of that, there's no synergy or even collaboration between counties because yeah. they're so different. <clears throat> and I think McQueen is the only one I know that has a youth ministry mm -hmm. or even a youth department. Mm -hmm. and, and that's painful uh, because it means that when you're even focusing on an issue like MCAs, they wouldn't focus on an issue that this is a youth centric issue because frankly they're different. Mm. Uh, young people are so many so issues will be diverse. Mm -hmm. In Isli it could be um, lack of road access or garbage collection and then just next door to Madare it could be insecurity and extrajudicial killings. Mm -hmm. But then the MCAs are just door to door. Mm -hmm. And so how do you handle an issue about those two different issues? So you would need an entity that focuses on just 
issues affecting young people and that is their particular role to coordinate with these MCAs okay. so that they feel that there's a body that they can report this to and also receive support and collaborate with other than one MCA yeah. working on an issue within their area. Okay, so these would sort of report to the MCA? Yes, mm -hmm. they would actually coordinate. So the system is, um, so also one of the five points we've put in is elections. Mm -hmm. And it's because um, the idea, the initial idea within the bill is that it's a council that's nominated okay. mainly. And so we have a huge problem with that. Huh? Yeah. Uh, so we want young people to be able to elect who they feel should represent them. Okay. And it comes from the ward. We have a whole formula toward the national, toward an assembly, then the assembly elects the CEO, which right now the CEO is appointed, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, we feel that within this assembly, the way it's going to be structured, they will be national youth councils or the county chapters. Mm -hmm. Now these county chapters will have representatives from the governor's office as well. They'll have maybe CECs, they'll have those involved in youth work in the county as well. Right. Just so that there's better coordination in the county as compared to now we're seeing at least three counties I think that have their own youth policy yeah. okay. and, and that shouldn't be the case. It should synergize with the main national youth mm. policy and go down to the counties. All right. All right. Right. Well, um, let's get into the second point on this agenda, which is youth mainstreaming. And as I do, I see your feedback coming in on our SMS line. I'll be reading those out shortly, as well as on our Facebook page. Uh, again, uh, it's double two triple nine for our SMS line. And you can also reach us on Facebook at Switch TV Kenya, on Twitter as well at Switch TV Kenya, and on Instagram at Switch TV KE. I'll be getting to that shortly. But um, let's begin talking now about youth mainstreaming. Tell us mm -hmm. about that, Edward. Yeah, so as Narima said earlier, we need a structure whereby all the youth functions are stream streamlined. Because you find, for example, right now, the, the youth policy, we have a national youth policy. Mm -hmm. uh, and majority of counties have not aligned their youth policies to the national policy. Mm -hmm. So you find they are working on a different, uh, different magnitude, while the national government is also working on a different scale. Mm -hmm. So this brings in some kind of conflict. Also, when it comes to us as youth serving organizations, there is a lot that we do in different counties in the Republic. Most of them you find are almost the same thing, building capacity and also trying to advocate issues of young people. Mm -hmm. So we find there is a lot of duplication mm -hmm. around the country. And when, 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 when we are mainstreaming these issues, then we'll have to have a coordination whereby we know, for example, if it, it, it's a certain county, then we, we have this youth serving organization doing this and this and this and this. But right now we don't have that. So okay. we find there is a lot of duplication doing the same thing, having the same people, retraining the same people all yeah. over and over again. All right. Yeah. Well, let's take a break there. We're going to take a short break now. But uh, when we come back, we're going to touch on the remaining agendas on this uh, bill. And of course, I invite you to continue sending in your feedback, even as I'll be reading out a few of them as we go along. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, welcome back to Full Circle. My name is Joyce Omondi Wahiga, and I'm here with Nerima Wako Ojua and also Edward uh, Kipkalia, uh, who is the executive or program coordinator of Emerging Leaders Foundation. And of course, Nerima is the uh, executive director of Siasa Place. We're talking about um, the youth serving organization and the national youth council bill of 2019 these guys are going to be submitting submitting it on monday i understand there's going to be a march <laughs> <laughs> now i'm there as we take it forward uh but certainly uh, uh we we do wish you well as you put this forward and thank you um, for going ahead of so many of us. A lot of you are asking about how you can take part. Uh, and so I understand there's a hashtag. Maybe yes. we can share that now. So the hashtag is NYC Twitter Kayo. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to start having conversations today from 5 p.m. Okay. Um, just in preparation for Monday. Okay. So we're asking anyone who's interested to join in, also to learn about the recommendations that we're making. And if you'd like to join us, you're free to join us. It's yeah. open. Yeah. Yes. 
and people can be part of the organization as well yes yes, yes okay. it's open yes. how do you join the youth serving organization under the hashtag you can just say that you're interested in okay. and then we will be able to link up with you because it's a technical team of so many. Yeah. Currently, um, Power 254 and Siasa Place myself were the conveners. Okay. So we would be, either one of us, contacting and bringing in new members. All right. All right. So um, lots of <laughs> questions coming in on SMS. So maybe we'll tackle these first before we get into the other amendments. Uh, but here on SMS, I have someone who says, hey, Joyce, um, I'm always in love with your show. Uh, thank you for the compliments too, Cynthia. You're watching us from Ruaka. Good morning, Joyce. Uh, looking great. That's Irene Candy tuned in from Mombasa. Hey, Joyce, how are they helping youth talent and how can I reach them? Uh, that's someone else. Do, you don't need me your name or where you're watching from. Uh, but youth talent a big one you know of course when you talk about young people we're very creative lots of different ideas is there a way to sort of harness those um for our economy for governance for leadership yeah so as individual organizations we have models in which we we harness the talent development so i can speak for example of emerging leaders foundation so we we have a way of trying to recruit different young people who have the power to take initiatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always talk about agency, the ability of these young people to take purposeful initiatives. Yeah. Uh, so we, we always try to remove the victim mentality that young people has mm -hmm. have because we realize some time back, a lot of young people could, could, will just say, you know, circalis idea. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of attitude is what we are trying to tackle. And right. part of it is on self-awareness model because we believe any 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 young person needs to understand themselves right. because they can they can also lead themselves. Okay. So maybe Narima can yeah. also. Yeah, I guess talk. also just to add on what Edward has said, um, also something that we noticed within the current bill that's being deliberated is the fact that they missed that mm. Um, mm. youth with talent youth in sports youth in ict technology so we were also like where are these young people mm -hmm. and so that's also part of the recommendations where we're pushing for nyc to push for better policies so mm -hmm. that the environment is better for youth who are maybe in talent okay. and arts okay. so that they're able to also you know thrive in that capacity so i think that's something that's also missing all right uh good morning joyce caroline tuned in from juja loving the show what those two guests are doing is amazing kudos mm -hmm. uh, she says someone else here asking how do we how do they wish to deal with youth unemployment we lack jobs and even internships are not paying much how can we deal with this issue again you don't leave me your name or where you're watching from but thank you for your comment uh Narima, let's start with you on this one so interestingly, um, I was in a meeting on Monday and we're looking at the different African countries and how they are tackling unemployment. And the interesting thing is that Kenya has spent so much money when you look at NYS, uh, Uwezo Fund or Youth Development Fund. Actually, it's one of the countries that has spent the most mm. when it comes to youth. The problem is that most of it is missing, stolen, lack of an accountability. And that goes to what Edward was talking about, structure and coordination. Mm -hmm. When you look at Kenya, there are a lot of programs and even this KOP, I don't even know. Yeah. 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 Kenya and youth employment. employment. Yes. I mean, they're there. But then where the problems come is what we're talking about the county level where it's not coordinated even Busia just recently passed an internship policy um, even when you're looking at TVET or vocational training you're seeing how institutions are lacking not just equipment but also lectures and mm -hmm. things like that so what we are pushing for within this current NYC bill again coordination, mm -hmm. again, structure, again, yeah. accountability, so that it's more difficult to do that. And then we can begin to see more job creation. Right. Because even as much as we're seeing government saying, you go create your jobs, it's difficult. Yeah, this yeah. environment makes it difficult to even do that. Sure. And we always say that it's not fair. Yeah. So through streamlining and also professionalization of youth work, yeah. it's, that's what it goes into. Because someone is viewing this as a career social media yeah. as a career but yeah. it's not viewed as something mm. that you can sure. earn money with but you know on the point of coordination 
it, it's it's striking to me that we have all of these different bodies, right? Uwezo Fund, Youth Fund, uh, KOP, there's NYS, there's all manner of different things happening. And not to get into the whole politics of Punguza Mizigo and whatnot, <laughs> but, you know, it, aren't you concerned that we just have, there's a lot of, it seems there's a lot of, Duplicate, duplic, duplication of organizations and zero work actually happening. So, you know, we're here paying taxes, money is going somewhere, mm -hmm. but we're not seeing the fruits of anything. So is it really a question of just coordination or even entirely downsizing, streamlining, really being very strict on that structure that you guys are proposing? Um, because it, it sounds like the infrastructure is there, but for whatever reason, we don't see anything happen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, basically, uh, that is a very good observation, and it goes to policy. Uh, you find there are, there are policies that have these interventions, but the National Youth Council has not been empowered enough to be able to suggest these policies to mm -hmm. the government concerning the matters of young people. Most of the work they do is on running different programs and not actually focusing on making policies on how the youth work should be done mm. and all that. So there's Who is making those policies? So most... <laughs> I was about to jump, but <laughs> you are talking. <laughs> so you, and it's, a, it's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Someone else somewhere yes. is making all these policies On and the then app, yeah. setting up a million and one organizations to just run programs. And so there, of course, you're going to have a coordination issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So most of it comes from the government. And uh, you find because there's the intergenerational difference mm -hmm. between what young people are doing and the people in government. So because of that lack of having a, a dialogue between the two, then what, what the older generation thinks worked for them in the past is what they are trying to implement to work for these young people. Okay. Um, it's very sad for me to state that most of these ministries have, have a youth advisor. Mm. And mm. they advise these ministers on matters to do with youth. Mm -hmm. However, they don't really have the know-how of what is really happening on the ground. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's where now the policy pro problem comes in. Because if, if we have an informed decision of what is happening to young people in the ground, mm -hmm. then it can be able to have an impact okay. on them. Okay. And by the way, some of those schemes are money-making schemes mm -hmm. in, in, in line with uh, youth yeah. issues. All right. I need to get to some questions here before we uh, wrap up. Um, hey, Joyce, please ask the guests to ask for the removal of the minimum age limit, which is 35 in the Constitution, on the post <laughs> of the president. This is one of the reasons youth are not <laughs> taken seriously in this country. If we can't vie, we should not vote. That's Martin watching us from where? Do you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Martin, you can join us. Martin, you got to show up. But um, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Do you, I mean, is it really about age at the end of the day as far as the presidential ballot itself? And since you guys are working... Siasa, please, right? <laughs> like, you're all about politics. Yeah. Do you think youth can handle being president? I, I think it depends on the individual. Um, mm. And it's not a matter of age. But I do think there have been so many um, ideas people have come up with, including a governor, the deputy must be 35 and mm. below. Yeah. Just considering the the demographics of our population. Sure. But I think it's it's worth a conversation having mm -hmm. because if you just go toward Nigeria, they just lowered the age to be governor. Yeah. It never used to be it used never used to be that it's it's open. It used to be that you had to be thirty five and above. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's why they had the campaign not too young to run. Yeah. And so it's not just a, a Kenyan issue. Yeah. It's actually an African issue where right. culture and norms look at young people as not being able to think yeah, and, and make decisions. Yeah. yeah, all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, someone else here says, what do they think about the story on Starehe MP Charles Njagwa filing a motion to cut the high number of unemployed youth? The MP wants the retirement age reduced to 50 from 60. Uh, 25,000 public servants risk losing their jobs if this happens. Edward. Uh, actually, I support that uh, because, one, we, we are in a place whereby our public servants, most of them are beyond the age, retirement age, mm. and there is a gap 
that is being created. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to reduce that, uh, that number. But you know, that will mean that not everyone, uh, not everyone who is unemployed will get that opportunity. Yeah. However, I can see the government was trying to employ about, about 600 or 800 mm -hmm. young people to go through the program. Mm -hmm. of trying to have an internship within the public uh, uh, public service mm -hmm. sector. However, it is a one-year contract mm -hmm. and it's non-renewable. Mm -hmm. And you wonder what will happen now if these people have gone through the program, they have been empowered and, 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 and they, they have nowhere to go because it's supposed to be in a system side that when they come into, into the system, they can be able to know what is really happening in the public sector and be able to traverse through the ranks uh, slowly as we get uh, the older generation out of the system. All right. All right. Well, our time is running out, but let's very quickly go over the other three uh, proposed amendments, uh, uh, key areas rather, in the bill. So I want you guys to just speed through this very quickly, but structure and coordination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we touched on that, yeah. just mapping yeah. what people are doing with regards to young mm -hmm. people. Okay, corporate membership. Okay, so <laughs> corporate, <laughs> I'm sorry. corporate membership is, we felt that currently NYC is completely funded by government. Okay. So it keeps them, you know, being able to just rely on government. Yeah. So they cannot be autonomous. Yeah. So for us, corporate membership is organizations which are basically like ours, being able to make contributions toward NYC to mm -hmm. remain members. And that means that NYC would now be accountable to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very quickly, capacity building and resource mobilization, that's the fifth uh, of the five uh, in the point agenda. Yeah, so, so resource mobilization is what Nerima was talking about. Yeah. On capacity building, most of these people who are elected uh, to serve in this National Youth Council don't have the capacity to run. Yeah. And that's why we need now to build the capacity through different programs that can be able to help them understand how to work with the young people okay. and also understand how this sector works. All right. Well, as I wrap up this uh, discussion, let me read a final comment here by Brian Odeo on Facebook. He says, getting a job needs experience. Getting experience through internship is hard also. Some companies want you to pay them for it, yet you aren't employed, so you don't have money to support yourself across the internship period. Kenyan youth are facing great challenges that need to be deeply looked at. Thanks to the NYC Bill 2019, we hope for the best. Edward Nerima, thank you so much for joining me here on Full Circle with Joyce this morning. This has been a great discussion. We'll be looking out for you on Monday, <laughs> yeah. and we hope to have you back, even as we continue tackling youth issues here thank in the you. country. Thank you. All right, guys, with that said, we're going to get ready for our lifestyle hour. And of course, coming up next, we're talking about change makers. Lots for you to be tuned in for. Uh, I'll be back in just a bit. Yeah.